Hello and welcome to KCS Connects. My name is Jack Miller. I'm the co-directors of Key Clinical Skills. And KCS Connects is our way of helping to connect you with some of the research that we believe will make a difference to your clinical practice, hopefully on Monday morning. This issue of KCS Connects looks at a recently published article in BMC Musculoskeletal Disorders, and the researchers are primarily from the United Kingdom. What they looked at is differentiating migraine, cervicogenic, headache, and asymptomatic individuals based on physical findings. And this was both a systematic review as well as meta-analysis. Now, a little bit of background about headaches. The International Headache Society does tend to subclassify headaches into two major groups. First of all, primary headaches, where the source is in the head itself. And a good example of that would be migraine. And then secondary headaches where the source of the headache is not in the head itself. And again, a good example of that would be cervicogenic headache. More background here is that there's a lot of overlap between cervicogenic headache and migraine. For instance, they both tend to be unilateral in their presentation. But along with that, migraine patients report neck stiffness on the same side as their headache. Neck pain during the migraine phase and during the prodome phase often migraines tend to be co-occurrent with cervicogenic headache. And then there tends to be neck pain during the recovery phase of migraines as well. Now the problem here is that because of this overlap of signs and symptoms between these two diagnoses, it, you can get misdiagnosis and some uh, uh, research indicates up to 50% of that. And as such, you get the wrong treatment and you don't get better, do you? And the reason for this overlap tends to be this convergence of both cervical as well as trigeminal input into the trigeminal cervical nucleus. And as such, neck pain can be experienced in individuals who get migraines. And along with that, headache can be experienced for those individuals with upper cervical dysfunction. Now, the methods that they tended to use here is, first of all, they start off with over 11,000 articles, and they use the Quadris 2 tool to pare that down to 62 articles for their systematic review and 41 uh, papers for the meta-analysis. And these are all studies that, that looked at the diagnostic accuracy of clinical testing for migraine, cervicogenic headache, and asymptomatics. And some of the tests that they looked at are listed for you over there on the table on your right-hand side. Now, the results that they came back with is, first of all, the flexion rotation test is a useful tool for looking at mobility to be able to help differentiate between cervicogenic headache and migraine. Along with that, the craniocervical flexion test, now looking at motor control, can again help us separate these two diagnoses. These tests are safe, reliable, require minimal uh, training and equipment, but you can get a lot better with the proper instruction. Now, basically what we come back with again is that muscle impairment as measured by the craniocervical flexion test, mobility impairments as measured by the flexion rotation test. These tests have a best sensitivity and specificity for separating out cervicogenic headache and a migraine. Now, the flexion rotation test has previously been shown to target primarily the C12 level, and that's supported by this paper as well. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this particular study, come visit us at www.keyclinskills.ca and access our research review library where the full review of this paper is provided for you, as well as free access to a relatively large library. And if you'd like to learn more about the management of cervicogenic headache and dizziness, again, come visit us at www.keyclinskills where you can access our online program on this topic. Thanks for your time.